Welcome back, super friends and super family. I'm Nick, and today I'm reacting to The Big Bang Theory Season 2, Episodes 11 and 12. It's crazy that we're already into Episodes 11 and 12 of the second season. It feels like it's flown by so, so quickly. I really had a great time with Episodes 9 and 10, and I'm very curious if we're going to pick up on that storyline. What's going to happen with Leonard and Stephanie? I'm really rooting for them to kind of work things out because I think... As I talked about in my after talk in the last reaction, I feel like both Leonard and Stephanie are kind of going into the relationship with some serious baggage and some anxieties about what might go wrong. But I actually think they're a really good fit for each other, at least of what we've seen so far. So I'm pulling for them. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with the two of them, if these episodes are also going to focus on that relationship. As always, if you want to watch along the full unedited reaction that is up on Patreon, that's the best way to support. That's also where you can watch future episodes of The Big Bang Theory if you don't want to watch wait let's just get right into it the big bang theory season two episodes 11 and 12. superman cleans his uniform by flying into earth's yellow sun which incinerates is that established vulnerable kryptonian fabric unharmed and daisy fresh i have never heard this what if he gets something kryptonian on it like what kryptonian mustard no such thing, right? Safely assume that all Kryptonian condiments were destroyed when the planet Krypton exploded. I'm with Sheldon on this. Destroy a rogue Kryptonian hot dog threatening Earth. Raj. Sheldon's so irritated. <laughs> Body is Kryptonian, therefore his sweat is Kryptonian. Yeah, what about Kryptonian pit stains? Ooh, now this is a good point. He loses his superpowers now. Before dinner, his host says, who's up for a little Kryptonian tetherball? Uniform now stained with indestructible Kryptonian perspiration. That is a dilemma. <laughs> Booyah. Come on, Sheldon, think of something. Superman would have taken his uniform to a Kandorian dry cleaner before he left the bottle. That might be true. I give up. You can't have a rational argument with this man. I have no idea what a Kandorian thing is. Isn't that the guy who won the MacArthur Genius Grant last year? Not all at once. It don't be too obvious. Now, Raj. <laughs> Now, Sheldon. <laughs> I didn't get a good look. Can I go again? No. You get one shot. You've done since you've been here completely useless. Did not. Did too. Okay, maybe some of Oh. The guy was just in the right place at the right time with the right uh, paradigm shifting. Give him some, cre <laughs> give him some credit. did not do anything for me. If I was going to go that way, I'm more of a Zac Efron kind of guy. <laughs> I'm David Underhill. Yeah. <laughs> Little starstruck. If I wanted to set something up in the photo multiplier lab, that you'd be able to give me a hand. Wow. <laughs> Here's my home number. Here's my office. Here's my parents' number. Up in New. Trust me, he doesn't need all of that. <laughs> what are you looking at? You've never seen a hypocrite before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a really good uh, way to deal with that letter. That's a great line. It looks like we're not going to focus on Stephanie much this episode, so maybe next episode. Trailing badly. Wolowitz needs a strike if he has any hopes of <laughs> dominating in the ninth frame with a career best 68. <laughs> oh, dang, look how seriously Sheldon is taking this. That's amazing. Hey, guys. Oh, no. Oh. Do over. There are no do overs in Wee Bowling. <laughs> more important than we bowling night actually i was it's a rhetorical question there is nothing more important <laughs> we know where he was i was working with dave underhill sounds like leonard's got a new bff he's a black diamond skier collects vintage motorcycles he plays in a rock we're in a rock band no you guys are we play rock band on our xbox <laughs> yeah not the same thing what are you wearing that's not he does it better <laughs> He said he was going to take me to the gym tomorrow, so I'm going to go practice my sit-ups. Okay, you're going to get in shape, Leonard. Nice. Man crush, dude. <laughs> I mean, yes. Are you and Leonard putting up a Christmas tree? We don't celebrate the ancient pagan festival of Saturnalia. What? Gather round, kids. It's time for Sheldon's beloved Christmas special. I am curious to hear this, actually. Appropriated by Northern Europeans, and eventually it becomes the so-called Christmas tree. So you don't approve of the origin? And that, Charlie Brown, is what boredom is all about. <laughs> Okay, that was good commentary, Howard. Neighbor gifts, so I'll just put them under my tree. Wait, you bought me a present? Uh-huh. What is it? 
A sweater? A fun sweater? You haven't given me a gift. You've given me an obligation. Oh, oh I see. My first Hanukkah with Sheldon, he yelled at me for eight nights. <laughs> Is that represented by the gift you've given me? That's no wonder suicide rate Scott. <laughs> Dang, Sheldon. The die has been cast. The moving finger has writ. Hannibal has crossed the. <laughs> it's funny when it's not happening to us. It is pretty funny. It is pretty funny. I'm going to need a ride to the mall. It's happening to us. <laughs> you can only stay uninvolved for so long when you're friends with Sheldon. Are you gonna make it? Yeah, I guess. Is this from the workout, or did he hurt himself? For letting me try out your motorcycle. Oh. I had no idea it was so heavy. The thing just fell right over on me. That guy, that's who that actor reminds me of. He looks a little bit like Dane Cook. Ooh, are you okay? Oh, yeah. It's just a little motorcycle accident. A non-moving accident. How fast were you going? I don't know. It's all such a blur. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even get it started. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Oh, dang. How do you know Leonard? I'm a physicist. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I know or indoorsy and pale. But I'm not indoorsy. The appropriate sunblock because I don't take melanoma lightly. Oh, okay. You're a little indoorsy though, too. It's okay. Together? Yeah, actually we are. Yeah, we're examining the radiation levels of photomultiplier tubes for a new dark matter detector. Uh, sweetie, sweetie, Dave was talking. Oh, dang, dang. That's harsh. Science. Since when? Since always. <laughs> Since I found an attractive scientist. The last thing I would ever call you is a geek. That's what I am. Queen of the nerds. Cool toys, you know, lasers and stuff. I have always wanted to see a big sign. <laughs> so, you and her? No, just neighbors. I mean... I don't know how you live next door to that without doing something about it. Science is my lady. <laughs> see you tomorrow, Leonard. See ya. Bye, Penny. Have fun. Well, she doesn't even answer. Wow. Yes? Oh, dang. <laughs> But hold on, Leonard, I mean, come on, you're still in the relationship with Stephanie, right? I don't see anything in here a woman would want. <laughs> Bayberry, cinnamon, and vanilla. It's as if my head were trapped in the pajamas of a sultan. And if you don't like this stuff, let's just go next door and build her a bear. Bears are terrifying. <laughs> oh, dang, he's scared of bears, okay. It promotes relaxation. Penny is tense. So she knows you, she's tense, we all... <laughs> I accept the bath item gift hypothesis. I now lay the following conundrum at your feet. What? You put no thought into that. I'm sorry. Uh, this... <laughs> Someone needs to explain to Sheldon that wasting too much energy on unimportant decisions is not a scientifically smart way to approach your life. The hypothetical relationship that exists between us... <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> they don't pay me enough to answer those questions, Sheldon. Now, are we friends? Colleagues? Are you my grandmother? <laughs> I don't understand what you're talking about, and you're making me a little uncomfortable. <laughs> this place is unbelievable. I've been offering to show you around for a year and a half. Dang. You always said you had yoga. No more yoga. Maybe I heard you wrong. A lot of words sound like yoga. <laughs> Not to mention being curious and agile in other respects. <laughs> yes, please shut up. <laughs> you and I should get back to the lab. You know, that dark matter isn't going to detect itself. No, no, no. He's busy. We're going to explore the effects of tequila shots on a gorgeous 22-year-old woman. Uh, oh, my gosh. Can I drive the motorcycle? Can't do any worse than Leonard. Oh, God, that's good. That's funny. <laughs> oh, laugh through the pain, Leonard. This is Leonard's Joker origin story. That's what they got? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> With the ice cream? Okay, that's amazing. That's amazing. I'll look up the price of her gift online, choose the basket closest to that value. Oh. And then I'll return the others for a full refund. It's gonna go wrong, but I like it. Is it okay if I hide them in your room that- Yeah, no, 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 you, this is your bird. Do whatever you want. Thank you. Oh, dang. Gentlemen. <laughs> They're like his servants carrying around his gifts. I never did and get Penny a new boyfriend. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Someone's having holiday fun here. David Underhill is ten times smarter than me. Railroad spike into his brain for me to beat him at checkers. 
Next to him, I'm like one of those sign language gorillas who knows how to ask. No, 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 that's not true. So my question is, what's up with that? Fair question, right? Why are you yelling at me? No. Oh. Sorry, no, never mind, we're cool. Dave is not smarter than you. He's an idiot. What did he do? Photos of his wife off his cell phone before he tries to take nude photos of his girlfriend. He tried to take nude photos of you? That's what you took from that? That's terrible. <laughs> you are so okay with the way things are between us. Why are you so jealous? Look, that... The important thing is he's married and that's terrible. <laughs> is the truth gonna come out now? Eggnog. Lactose. It's just rum. It stopped being eggnog like half an hour ago. <laughs> oh dang, there's not even in there. <laughs> Smooth. Merry Christmas. By the way, my leg is killing me, thanks for asking. <laughs> Wait, but is Leonard not with Stephanie? Am I watching the wrong episode or something? I'm confused. Penny, you're here to exchange gifts. <laughs> I am prepared. You'll be pleased to know I'm prepared for whatever you have to offer. Okay. What is it gonna be, a comic book? A science book? Some type of book, right? I should note, I'm having some digestive distress. <laughs> So if I excuse myself abruptly, don't be alarmed. <laughs> oh, a napkin. Oh, not what I expected. What is it? What is it? Sheldon, live long and prosper. Leonard Nimoy. Oh, that's the, uh, the actor of Spock, right? That's actually his thing? Sorry, the napkin's dirty. He wiped his mouth with it. <laughs> I possess the DNA of Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> oh, it's priceless. You can't repay her. You can't. <laughs> Look at his reaction. He's gonna pass out. Look, he signed it. <laughs> Do you realize what this means? Oh. All I need is a healthy ovum and I can grow my own Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> giving you is the napkin. Be right back. You have to give Penny all of the baskets now, right? You have no choice, no returning anything. 101 totally cool science experiments for kids. That's really what he got her? <laughs> you know, because you're so into science. <laughs> okay, that is pretty funny though, right? Yeah, exactly. These are all for you. These are all for you. Don't drop it. Jeez, don't waste the presents. What did you do? I know. It's not enough. <laughs> oh, no way. No way. We're going to get a Christmas hug? Okay, that is special. That's priceless right there. That's one of the best heartwarming awkward hugs ever. It's a Saturnalia miracle. <laughs> that was a really good episode. That was a good Christmas episode. All right, that's the last servo. This looks dangerous. Termination Eradicator. Or Monty. Is it wrong to say I love our killer robot? No, it's allowed. It's As allowed. with my father, I both love and fear it. <laughs> what should be first to taste the wrath of Monty? Your furniture. How about the toaster oven? What did the toaster oven ever do to you? Fair question. Jimmy Mullins in the third grade. He still punched me in the face with my own fist. <laughs> you were just in the wrong boy's room at the wrong time. <laughs> It seems like a bit of a waste. This is an auspicious moment. Robert Oppenheimer or Neil Ar <laughs> Words to mark this historic scientific event. I'm sure you will have the words, Sheldon. Die, toaster, die. <laughs> Actually, that's great. That'll do it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. And today, a toaster was murdered. Was that real? Did they really build something like that for the show? All right, what's next? <laughs> I'm just gonna stay in tonight and do laundry. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, Penny, you're not staying in. That was good, though. Am I crazy, though? Did I miss something that happened with Stephanie? Did I misunderstand those episodes? Or are they just moving on because they didn't want to spend more time with that character? I'm a little bit bummed about that. Oh, yeah. This door got the full Monty. What the hell? Lucky it wasn't your door. It almost killed me. <laughs> Unaware of the upcoming Southern California Robot Fighting League Round Robin Invitational? Is he serious? It's a real thing? 
moved last year. Not all my mail has been forwarded. <laughs> There's an awards banquet and a dance afterward. This is a real thing? Please tell me it's a real thing. Howard, why don't we just work on the robot? Penny and I have begun our little tango. <laughs> Your tango? It takes two to tango. There's only one person dancing here. Eat the entree while it's still... <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Howard. Hot. There's no entree in your future. Smooth talking ladies, the truth is you are just pathetic and creepy. So what are you saying? <laughs> They're saying there's a chance. Nothing is ever gonna happen between us. Isn't flirting, you're serious. <laughs> you're just... Of course not. No woman is ever gonna flirt with you. You're just gonna grow old and die alone. Oh wow, that's very harsh. Thanks for the heads up. Howard, where are you going? I'm gonna go cry. Home to live my creepy, pathetic life. Aww. Someone had to say it. <laughs> what? We should enter you in the killer robot competition. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that is pretty funny. That is pretty funny. I guess this is gonna be a Howard-focused episode. Maybe he's gonna rethink his ways. He did seem surprised by what Penny said. I feel like Howard, romantically, is a little bit like Sheldon. <laughs> Crazy idea, Ma! Answer it! Why are you not at school today? I don't go to school! <laughs> Should I ask Leonard to bring over your homework? <laughs> Want me to get you a popsicle? Cherry, please! <laughs> I ate the cherry! All that's left is green! You make me want to kill myself! What's going on? I don't know. Now they're just yelling about popsicles. <laughs> Penny really got to him. Yeah. Despite his hard and crusty shell, Howard is a very sensitive man. Maybe it's a bit of a wake-up call for him, you know? What do on the plasma web is? You built a robot? His name is Monty. Delusions about entering him against my robot. Fighting League Round Robin Invitational. His name is gonna be Squat Metal. Is that really necessary? I believe it is. This is trash talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy this part. It's a traditional component in all sporting events. Exactly. <clears throat> Let's hear Sheldon's. Your robot is inferior. It will be defeated by ours. Ours exceeds yours in both design and execution. Okay, you need some work. I'm given to understand that your mother is overweight. <laughs> okay, he just redeemed it. Well done, Sheldon. Now, of course, if that is the result of a glandular condition and not sloth and gluttony, I withdraw that comment. <laughs> Let's settle this wabato a wabato. Let's do it. Let's make it personal. We're gonna go against each other in the wound wobbin, so let's slow down. Yeah, let's do it. Tomorrow, three o'clock, the kinetics web. Make it so. No, don't make it. Yes, make it so. Our engineer is incapacitated. Depressed because he's pathetic and creepy and can't get go. <laughs> We're all pathetic and creepy and can't get <laughs> That's why we fight robots. <laughs> If you're not there, you'll be exposed to ridicule. What part of America is that accent from? <laughs> That's a southern accent, clearly. Clearly. Hey, you got a minute? Yeah, come on in. I need you to apologize to Get Howard. Get out. <laughs> He's been in bed for two days. Yeah, probably with a blow-up doll. <laughs> you do kind of have that overexposed to gamma rays thing going on. What? And when you get angry, you kind of turn into like... Like the Hulk. I turn into a bear. The Hulk, right? Said what you said. Nurture it and make it shine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try it this way. Do me a favor, please. Boyfriend's apartment to get your TV back? You said you owed me one. Ooh. That's not fair. I came home with no pan. That's only fair. Give you a heads up about his mother. She's a delightful woman. You will love her. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see this. Who? Okay, now she's saying it's Penny. <laughs> I don't want to talk to her. Too bad. Hey, Ma! <laughs> Ran past me! Was I supposed to tackle her? Yes. Your mom seems nice. People move away from her on the bus. <laughs> Some things that I have said about you. What? What does he need to hear? I've been informed that you have feelings. <laughs> I'm sorry, Howard. Was that enough? I'm a big boy. I'm not traumatized by some random comment. Bye.
<laughs> oh dang, oh dang. What? That's Krippy's robot? I want to see, show us. We don't have that option. We've accepted the challenge. We can't run away from a fight. Yeah, you can't back down now. Five's running away from fights. <laughs> Not robot fights. Krippy's robot just had angry sex with a mid-sized <laughs> We now know what we're up against, and we can modify Monty so that he's prepared. That's true. That's true. Him install a bladder and a pair of shorts so he can wet himself. <laughs> Come on, don't have that attitude. David and Goliath. Engineering is merely the slow, younger brother of physics. Watch and learn. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Do either of you know how to open the toolbox? <laughs> <laughs> when I was 14. Oh my gosh, we get the whole life story. This is like Bruce Willis and Friends. Like a sexy little chipmunk. <laughs> How much of this can Penny stand? On a cloudy day, when it's cold out. I think Penny is genuinely missing Sheldon right now. Sick Sheldon. Month of May. Oh, it's cute. I... <laughs> it's not over, it's not over. <laughs> Talking about Marcy. That's great. Grossman. She came up with that sexy little chipmunk mouth and spit in my hair. Oh. You try too hard? What chance do I have if I don't try too hard? Oh, don't say that. You have a way better chance. You're funny. You have a cool job. You build stuff that goes into outer space. Yeah. This is going to be so helpful for Howard. This really is. You really think so? Yes. He's gonna try to kiss her? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this camera angle, what lens are they using? <laughs> oh, she punched him? <laughs> she punched him? That was her response, a punch? At 3400 RPM, it can cut through steel like it was Wubba. That does look like a pretty cool killing machine. So we've gotta call this off! The insensitively named Indian Burn. The only improvement you were able to make on the robot was to put fresh batteries in the remote. That's all you did? And it's overwhelming power. It's not overconfidence, that's observation. <laughs> Kripke will fall easy prey to my psychological warfare. Observe. Okay, I can't wait to observe. Robot is prepared to meet its maker, but maker, clearly the two of you have met. I like his trash talk now. No, no, thumbs up from me. What is his problem? Way to bust out the Jedi mind tricks, dude. I thought it was a decent line. The sweet has no rules. He's right, Leonard. The paradigm is to the dead. Your robot has the spoils of war. I'd rather see Monty dead than in your hand. <laughs> what he said, go? Do it. All right, then. Come on, Sheldon. Pull off a miracle. <laughs> Just do like boxing. Don't get too close. That's new. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> You are just really gonna run away? How much are they gonna destroy? This is amazing. Oof. I did this. Monty was killed by my hubris. <laughs> Anybody says this is my fault. No one's arguing with you, dude. <laughs> I got your text. How bad is it? Oh, yeah. oh. Forget the robot. What happened to you? He slipped and fell. I slipped and fell. <laughs> In the bathroom. <laughs> Look at the damage to his face. That's quite a punch. Bathtubs are capable of doing when you don't treat them with respect. Punch you when your eyes are closed. <laughs> Penny should do boxing. Forget being a waitress. What a punch. We'll bury him in the morning. It's a simple ceremony. I'll speak. Leonard, you'll play your cello. Aren't you getting a little carried away? I mean, it's just a toy robot. How dare you? Toy How robot? Dare How dare you? <laughs> oh. Penny. I know, I got it. <laughs> Sheldon! I'm sorry! Just don't punch him. Don't get the wrong idea. The way I see it, I'm halfway to pity sex. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's The Big Bang Theory Season 2, Episodes 11 and 12. So two funny episodes, very different than what I thought the episodes were going to be. And I feel like... I maybe misunderstood. I'm going to have to go back and look when I edit episodes 9 and 10, which I haven't yet at the time of filming this. But I, I honestly thought they were going to pick up things with Stephanie, and I, I didn't think that storyline was completely over, but maybe that actress was just available for a couple episodes and had other work to do, or maybe they didn't really want to focus on her character too much and have a 
serious relationship with Leonard at this point, especially with the current will they won't they dynamic of Penny and Leonard going on. So I don't know. I, I feel like they could have, even if she wasn't a character who's going to stick around for a while, I feel like there's a lot of interesting stuff to happen potentially between the two of them, at least for me, both comedically and dramatically. But anyways, they didn't follow that storyline. But instead, in episode 11, we had a really, really good Christmas episode. I mean, we had... Uh, Leonard kind of befriending a new hip, cool physicist who's like taller and more handsome and not the typical image most people would probably imagine in their mind if they think of a physicist. And then, of course, that led to him being introduced to Penny and he and Penny kind of going out. And that was just kind of an interesting dynamic. I mean, you do see how Penny responds differently to a guy who's stereotypically more attractive than Leonard. And you see how unhappy that makes Leonard. I mean, Leonard is in denial that he doesn't have strong feelings for Penny by being like, oh, things are okay. And that's part of the reason I feel like that could have been even more interesting if we had Stephanie in the mix of that dynamic, because if Leonard deep down is really in love with Penny, or that's who he really wants to be with, and he's just with Stephanie because that's someone who he can be with that, you know, kind of makes him forget about that, and it's just, you know, someone that you can spend time with and you enjoy their company, but you're not necessarily really infatuated with and really have those strong, deep feelings. To me, that would add a layer of complexity to that dynamic that could be really interesting. But instead, it's just Leonard kind of seeing his friend, someone that he's impressed with and kind of starstruck with, then to see the girl that he's interested also kind of be starstruck and impressed by that guy. It's got to be painful. And so Leonard was kind of, it was kind of a down in the dumps during the holiday season, which, you know, is very common, I feel like, during the holidays, especially if you're going through a rough patch in your life it's very easy to feel extra depressed when it's you know you hear the christmas music and you see the presents and stuff like that a lot of people seem very happy and you're not feeling that way yourself and then we had the kind of the b storyline of sheldon <laughs> upset that petty had gotten him a gift and trying to figure out what perfect gift to get for penny and, and i like the obligation that you know sheldon the way he looks at like socializing and things like that is in a very What's the perfect word? Not logical, but kind of way. Like it's a very robotic almost way of like analyzing it as if he's an alien species trying to learn about human behavior. But because of that, it's so interesting. But I like how seriously he takes kind of those social niceties. Like he doesn't feel okay not getting a present for Penny, even though Penny says it's okay not to. He feels obligated, which I think is a good quality in him that feel, you know, even though he's annoyed having to reciprocate and get her a gift, the fact that he does and puts in that effort uh, is kind of a cool thing that I like about Sheldon. And then his method of like picking the best present that's the most appropriate for Penny was pretty hilarious. And then, of course, the reveal at the end that Penny got him um, a napkin signed by, I'm pretty sure this is the actor, almost positive, it's the actor of Spock from the original Star Trek. And so that was just amazing. His reaction to that gift was hilarious. And then I love how he just gives everything to Penny. And even then, that's not enough. But my favorite scene of that episode was actually between Len Leonard and Penny when Leonard goes over and he's upset and he kind of has a very truthful moment in his anger, I feel like he got a little bit of courage in that moment where he kind of is expressing his frustration being like, hey, you said you didn't want to be with me because maybe I'm too smart for you. But then my friend who's smarter than me, you're just OK. What's going on? You know what I mean? Which I think is revealing. Like that's not that may be part of the reason why Penny didn't decide to go with Leonard, those insecurities. But there's more to it than that. I really feel like. Leonard, if he hadn't given up so easily and handled things a little more delicately, you know, with his conversations, the way he communicated to Penny after their first date, they would possibly be dating now, potentially, you know, and then they would really give it a real shot and see where um, if that relationship would work or not. But it just felt like a real a real moment because, of course, Penny in that moment was really hurt because, you know, that guy <laughs> turns out he had a wife. Wow, what a guy. But yeah, so they're just both hurt. And I just like that image of them sitting on the couch together, both being a little bit unhappy during the holiday season kind of sipping on rum in an eggnog container i just i like that it felt real it reminded me of like some of the scenes in friends where they go outside of the apartment and two characters like sit down on that little step in between the two apartments and you just have a kind of a real human moment sometimes sharing something that you're unhappy with in your life 
And uh, I just thought that was a nice little scene. Well acted, well written, and, you know, understated, but good. And then episode 12 was a really interesting episode. I mean, we had the robot battling, and that was very entertaining, very different. I am kind of curious how they built those props for the show and how much they could actually function. I'd just be curious to see almost the behind the scenes of both of those robot designs. And then we had a confrontation with Penny and Howard, and we really got to focus a lot more on Howard, which I thought was very interesting. You know, Howard, you know, he's constantly making like these completely like inappropriate remarks, you know, anything, anytime he's around a female, Howard just becomes persona non grata. Like you just don't want him around. But I thought what was really interesting, I mean, finally Penny snaps and kind of says what I'm sure she's been thinking and feeling for quite some time around Howard. Um, but that really does affect Howard. And I appreciated how, I mean, it's very funny having Penny go over, you know, Le Leonard Cash is in the favor that he uh, did for Penny in the very first episode of the show, which I liked that callback. I like how he brought that up. And then, of course, Penny goes over. She gets to meet Howard's mother, which is fun. Um, and then he's, she's stuck in this uncomfortable situation where Howard is kind of opening up, just giving his whole life story and backstory, kind of explaining probably the core insecurities and issues he has with women. But I do think that was interesting and also just a nice, honest moment. Like, I agree with Penny. I don't think Howard has been more likable as a character than in that moment where you kind of hear him just be honest about why he behaves in a certain way and how he feels like he's never enough. And that's really the reasoning behind him trying so hard. And, like, you can just tell he's he clearly is delusional about what, you know, women actually respond to, but that's the motivation behind him, you know, saying all these like things that he thinks are flirtatious, but are just inappropriate and just no one wants that. Right. And then of course, you know, that was a nice heartwarming kind of interesting character moment, but then it was funny as well because then, you know, he gets a little sympathy from Petty and he's like, okay, let me go in for the kiss. I do appreciate the camera. I feel like they use a different lens. I would bet money that they use that just because their faces were so close and just exaggerated. But I thought that was a very good choice for that movement of the kiss and then the punch. But unfortunately, of course, because they didn't have their engineer, they they lost the robot battle. I was actually pulling for a miracle that, you know, Sheldon would be able to pull something off and beat that guy. I really wanted them to win in that fight. I hope there's some type of rematch in the future because I thought those robots were pretty entertaining and just, do those robot fights really exist? Is that something in real life? I've never heard of that before, but that would be hilarious if you could go have like robot gladiator matches between all these super smart like dudes and engineers. Like, that could be quite entertaining. But I like both those episodes. I like them. They're they're both pretty different in what they focused on. Um, but I feel like they both had a lot of strong jokes and some more serious story elements that I found very engaging. The one thing I said, like I said, I just, I like the character of Stephanie. And I like the dynamic between she and Leonard. So maybe she'll come back later. You know, I wouldn't mind if she pops up later and it's just like, oh, we just get to see more of her character and maybe here. But I have a feeling they're not going to. It just seems a little bit abrupt. So we're probably done with her character. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with uh, the romantic lives of all the characters moving forward. Forward. As always, you want to watch along the full unedited reaction that is up on Patreon. This is the best way to support the channel. That's also where you can watch future episodes of The Big Bang Theory if you don't want to wait and you'd care to support. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, be active, be mindful, and be a hero.